terrific opportunity. We have an interla internationally acclaimed uh, award-winning fashion designer. Her name is Nikki Hine. Um, there's so much I want to find out about Nikki Hine. I've got a wife who's a, uh, who's a design person uh, from inception and she'll be listening to everything we talk about. Uh, Nikki, welcome to The Informer. Thank you so much. So um, nice to be here. I love that, that, that uh, sign in the background that says Blind Grit. Tell me about it. Talk to me about Blind Grit. Sure. Yep. Um, well, Blind Grit is, is my fashion label that I've started. I, um, I actually created my first collection in 2015 and in starting to do some research when I'd completed that, I realised that um, I, I, was, I was looking for other legally blind, vision impaired fashion designers in Australia to see who are my cohort, like who are my people? And I couldn't find any. Uh, so I started to look further afield. I looked um, internationally and there are certainly some internationally. There are three, I think, in America, a couple in the UK. Of course, France has one, the Ukraine has one, or is it Ukraine now? I forget. <laughs> um, but there were none in Australia. And I, contact, I contacted Vision Australia. I thought that cannot be right. And uh, said, I'm, I'm, I'm a fashion designer, kind of just at the start of, of my career. Um, I'm looking for other Australian fashion designers who are, who are legally blind or blind. Do you know of any? And they said, well, no, not offhand, but there will be. There'll, there'll be some. And so for the next probably two and a half years, they were looking, I, will look, I was looking, and then... Oh, about a year ago, they did an article saying, you know, Nikki Hine, how, how Nikki Hine became Australia's first blind fashion designer. So I figure I can declare that I'm Australia's first <laughs> um, blind fashion designer, which I'm very, I'm very proud of. And I'm very kind of, I'm very proud and slightly disappointed at the same time, you know, that looking around that blind group was born because as I looked around at the lack of, um, not just people with visual disability, but people with disability in general, in all facets of the fashion industry. Yeah. Talk, to me, talk to me about the challenges for a legally blind um, designer. Uh, what, were the, what are the hardest things that you have to uh, compete with? Um, it's interesting because people ask me this question a lot. And uh, so I guess I'm used to used to thinking about it now, so now. For example, what I'm asking is the whole colour palette, is it available to your eyesight? It is available to my eyesight, yeah. Um, I can see out of half of one eye, it was actually a stroke, I had a stroke and I was always, I could never see out of my left eye. Uh -huh. So when I had the stroke at the same time as I became a mum for the first time, it wiped out 50% of the field of vision in both eyes. So that's it. It's a brain injury. Um, it, it, the, 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 my brain can't process the sight. So you haven't been legally blind from eyes. young. So you've you've grown up as a as a as a sight properly a normally sighted person with a love for mm. colour, a love for fashion. Where is the inspiration coming from? Is it from your Queensland roots? Is it uh, uh, your heritage? Is it your love for Italian, French, European fashion? Mm. Uh, what, what what drives you? Well, it, it's it's like um, I guess it's it, it's creativity, it's art you can you can wear, isn't it? And it's very it's um quite a strong. It really is a, a strong social communicator. Um, and it's very interesting because I was speaking um at a fabulous. Vision Australia event, I think it was just last year, and, you know, acknowledging that for, for most people, when you meet them, the way they dress, the way they physically presented themselves is the first thing you notice. You can't help but kind of notice and judge on it. Yep. 
unless you have a visual disability, by visual, I mean people can see it. Yep. I, I feel that uh, I have an invisible disability. I don't think I look legally blind. People meeting me may not know I'm legally blind. When you have a, vis a, a disability that's very visible, the first thing that people notice is your disability, uh, not not what you're wearing. But it it's a it's a very um it's a very strong social communicator. I think it's part of your social armor to express how you either how you feel or how you want to feel in a particular situation um, to help you feel a little more confident or to help you feel in a little better or to help you yeah in all in all sorts of scenarios so i love i love that about our, um fashion i love that you can almost i love that you can kind of create almost like a different character for yourself and i remember one of my sister's friends actually two of my sister's friends commenting when i was a teenager and a young adult wow, your sister looks like a totally different person every time <laughs> I see her. She always has quite a different image. And, um, oh, and I loved that as a compliment. Um, I hadn't, I don't think I'd consciously done it. I don't really know. But um, when that was said to me, I thought, yeah, I, I do do that. I don't know, if, as I say, I don't think I've been doing it consciously, but I love that you can look it's great. You can kind of give yourself mm. a different a different character. So, so I love that. You know, the idea of feeling like a Greek goddess for the day, or a <laughs> we're vamp, talking, or we're a... talking to Nikki Hine, who's uh, via Zoom uh, and uh, telling us a story about her new collection, uh, Blind Grit. Uh, Nikki, the thing that you touched on there a moment ago is what every woman in the world, I think, loves and luxuriates in when they they enter fashion. Uh, and they become fashion conscious. They, they love the ability to be like chameleons. And, and, and you watch them, whether it's the spring racing carnival in Melbourne, whether it's the, the races in Sydney at Randwick, or at the, uh, uh, the major events uh, that happen uh, right across the country. Depending where you are, you dress accordingly, and it's a different you. It's a different interpretation of you, a different edition of you. And I think what Nikki Hind has been telling us or reaching in to try and tell us is that the next collection is going to give us a glimpse a bit more of what Nikki Hind is all about. Are you excited about collection number two? Yeah, I, you, you've got no idea how excited I am actually because the first collection has taken way too long. So <laughs> Nikki Hind, the business girl, because before I became legally blind, part of what sensible old me did was um uh, public relations and and communications so i love business i love communications but when i lost my vision it i just could not get back into that that industry it was just it was probably a mindset just... getting your head around it would have been an extraordinary shift and change well and people just didn't want me people i mean in their defence, this was now 15 years ago. Um, but I would do well until people... Uh, I, I would not say I was legally blind in um, to begin with, and I would, you know... You felt, you, felt there was a stig you felt there was a stigma? I didn't feel there was a stigma. I knew there was a stigma. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'd, be, I'd be down to the final three and they'd be talking about money and things, and then I would... And they'd... Um, uh, I, I would have lied and said I had a license, which of course, being legally blind, I don't. Yeah. Um, because I knew that that would block me out straight away. But I mean, to me, I know because I had done the job for a long time, especially in cities, you can you can get to where you need to go. I, I mean, I usually use taxis and public transport anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. for me, I knew that wasn't an issue. But um, as as soon as it would come up that I was legally legally blind. They would, uh, it, it, it'd be a, a no, we're not really set up for that, but we think you're great, sorry. Without even actually asking what being set up for that was gonna entail. Um, no I can imagine. Asked. As I say, this was 15 years ago, yep. and I think some things have improved somewhat, 
but there's still a long way to go. So no, I don't think there was a stigma. I was absolutely outright turned down based on being legally blind because they now, were- Now tell me- you know, you I don't know what support, they worried about. They didn't say You outright. have supportive people around you that uh, have given you the, the, the confidence and the the courage to keep doing what you're doing and and to challenge yourself because that, that's what it sounds like you have some terrific people around you tell me about them um well i do now i didn't for a long time um because I, I, th there was a series of of um i've had a series of traumatic events throughout my life that um by the time i was um by the time my beautiful little boys were um, two and four, I was a legally blind single mum who had nothing, no money at all, um, no social supports, and was really struggling with the effects of post-traumatic stress. Um, no, it was awful. So in those times, no, I did not have um, social supports and, and not everybody does, uh, you, you know, with many of the many of the stories you, you see, I, I think there's an image that people who go through hardships often do have wonderful um, supports around them, particularly family, but that's not always it's not always the case, particularly when some of the traumas have been childhood traumas because they're linked to the family. Um, so no, blind grit was most definitely a very determined um, move on my behalf because I had these two beautiful little boys and there was not a chance I wanted to raise them as a crushed, unconfident, unjoyous, um, mum, that well, wasn't who I was, and 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 I wanted to give them the best of me. So it was the, so far as supports, it was just it was my little boys, unbeknownst <laughs> you know, to, you know, to them. It, you know what you've you've given us a glimpse into, uh, just what grit, what fire, what passion, what determination uh, is in the very makeup that that DNA of Nikki Hind. Can I just take an opportunity and, and commend you for not being a quitter, for not allowing the prejudices of others to, uh, to, to hold you back? And I'm thrilled to bits that there are two gorgeous boys. Did you say they're boys? Yep, two what boys. What are their names? Darcy and Corey, two teenagers now. I've got two <laughs> teenagers and I have to say, um, I'm going to take this opportunity to say I made it to Spotify, I was informed this morning. So I got to tell my two teenage boys, mum's on Spotify. <laughs> well, you know you've made it big time when Nikki Hind is on <laughs> Spotify. You've got two teenage boys. and They can revel in the fact that their mum is so cool. And more importantly, we, we can uh, luxuriate in the fact that we are very aware that this smart young woman, legally blind, has not been held back by anyone and has created a whole new range. It's called, it's called Blind Grit. If we want to find out a bit more about the new collection, where do we go, Nikki? Well, um, it, it would seem that Blind Grit's a rather original term, which is fabulous. So if you type Blind Grit into Google, I'm pretty sure it will be the first thing that comes up. But it is <laughs> www.blindgrit.com. And of course, Blind Grit appears to be the first and only designer fashion label in the world that is built entirely of and around people who live with disability. And I include trauma in that, that's, that's an invisible disability. Um, so all the fabulous jobs, everything except the manufacturing, so all the wonderful aspirational, fun, creative uh, jobs will be done by people who live with disability. So of course the designing I do myself, public relations, social media, graphic design, modeling, photography, hair, makeup, um, so many wonderful um, dream jobs, aspirational jobs. And the idea is when you put on your blind grip gear, it, you get to borrow all that awesome challenge conquering energy from this incredible group of people to push out of your own comfort zone. 
Yeah, you bring a whole new meaning to the term grow. fierce. Nikki Hine, thank you very yes. much for joining us on the Informer. Well done. Good luck. Thank, thank you so much.